What's up, nerdlings? Hello, nerdlings. Do you nerd for? Do you love the eighties? Ah, yeah, the eighties. We recently had the opportunity to do a very fun collab with J Love eighty one. So we're gonna put a link to those videos, two parts in the description down below talking about some 80s toys. Uh, you, you like talking about toys, I right? do love talking about toys, which is why now it is our turn and the ball is in our court. And we're talking about those toys you had as a kid, but somehow they went missing. You got rid of them, your mom got rid of them, your brother stole them, you traded them for a new candy bar. But now, as an adult, you found them again and now you have those toys back. Yes, these are 80s toys that got a second chance. So you had them, you lost them, got rid of them, but they're back. Back. I'm back. We chose age range from 1977 to 1984 because we figured that range right there is a very good range to guarantee that you actually grew up and remembered the 80s. I love the 80s. Now these toys don't necessarily have to be from that era, but they do have to range from 1980 to 1989. But we did make the cutoff at a certain age just so that you would remember the 80s. We're gonna turn it over to some of our friends in the community and hear what 80s toys they gave a second chance to. What's up guys, I'm JLove81 and the toy that I gave a second chance to that I lost back in the day in a box, I remember clearly what was in that box and unfortunately, I did lose the box. This was one of my favorite childhood toys and I just recently got it back this year. That is Rainbow Bright herself. So Rainbow Bright, I loved Rainbow Bright. I also had her car and her sidekick Twink. Twink was like this little creature, he was all white and that was her sidekick. He was in charge of the sprites of Rainbow Land. So pretty much what Rainbow Bright is, I mean, he started off with Hallmark cards in 1983, and then in 1984, they came out with the cartoon, the animated series. So Rainbow Bright was in charge of Rainbow Land. She turned Rainbow Land into a colorful place. It used to be all grayish, you know, no colors. She put colors in it, and that's what she does. And there were color kids that she rescued. Those are her friends, and they're in charge of their assigned colors of the rainbow. So you have like Red Butler, you have Buddy Blue, you know, which was my favorite actually, Buddy Blue, Canary Yellow, just different colors were her friends. She had Starlight, which was her horse. Yes, Starlight was her horse and I always wanted Starlight. Never had him, but you know, it was a talking horse with the colorful hair. So that's what she rode on. And there's villains, Lurky and Murky. So there were the villains that were always trying to steal colors. They hated colors. Um, it was a really cool show. They had the cereal. I used to I used to eat the cereal all the time. I remember like it was yesterday. The cereal, guys. Oh, it was so good. And then, you know, I had the record. I remember it was a read-along of the book. It came with the book. And I mean, everything Rainbow Bright was just totally 80s. I remember this. This was a definite big part of my childhood. And I'm glad to get her back in the collection. She's in fantastic condition. So this is exactly the same Rainbow. It's a Velcro hands. So there you go. <laughs> this is the same doll I had. So all I got to get back now is the car and Swink. And that's pretty much it. So I'm so grateful to get her back in the collection. Thank you, Tom and Lacey, for allowing me par to participate in this video. I'll see you guys later. Hey, it's your boy Fresh. And I'm Mary, and we are a co-op of nerds. And Do You Nerd invited us to their 80s Toys Second Chances Challenge. So that's what we are going to be showing you today. Now we're a little, we were a little young in the 80s, so our collection's not going to be as big. I don't have very many memories from the 80s. Well, that's because she was born in 1965, and so the 80s are just a blur of cocaine. And... Whatever. <laughs> so let's or go. like 20 years later. So let's go ahead and jump in. So here we have the LJN. WWF figures from 84 to 87. Now, growing up, I had Macho Man, King Kong Bundy, Iron Sheik, and Hulk Hogan. And since then, we've added Roddy Roddy Piper, Bruce Bar Beefcake, The Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, 
and Mean Jean. My favorite is Shiki Baby. Shiki Baby. For me, I had uh, all the different kinds of Polly Pockets. This was one of the ones that I had. It was made in 1989. It's Buttons Animal Hospital. It's pretty cool, as you can see. Of course, uh, this one that I was able to find later in life doesn't have any of the figures with it because most of the time when you find these Polly Pockets, even if they're in good shape, like this one, pretty good shape, um, they don't have the figure still with them. Here we got the Dynamic Duo from Kenner's 1984 Superpowers line. Now this is actually my original Robin. I can tell because he's got a lighter fluid or lighter burn on his back. He got into a fight. Uh, but I did have to reacquire this Batman because you can't break up the set. So what, my Batman broke. So were you fighting him using fire? Yes, he got into a fight. Someone burnt him. So he got a burn mark on his back. <laughs> what well, 80s collection would be complete without some masters of the universe i had buzz off uh growing up so i reacquired him and then i added mechanic and mantana but no he-man you oh. gotta have he-man i like the villain baby and from 1982 we have peachy from my little pony and even relevant to this day which is why i got it because even our daughter to this day can play with my Little Pony. Finally, we come to 1987 Tonka Supernaturals. I had both these as a kid and reacquired them later. Um, a lot of some people don't know about these. They've got holograms. Yeah, so Look he, at that. he changes from a skeleton to a zombie. Um, they all had these little chest plates. They all had hoods, they all had weapons and shields. So he's got his shield, weapon, chest plate. He just has a chest plate. So did you shut it off? Yeah, of course. What a bunch of pathetic losers caring about the 80s. The 90s is where it's at. Oh yeah, definitely. It was the summer of 1986, and it was just weeks before my fifth birthday. And there was only one thing that my heart desired. Only one special birthday gift that I needed. And that was the animal. Not the freaking Muppet, baby. Get that out of here. Not that stupid 2001 movie with Rob Schneider. I'm talking about the 80s. We're talking about the animal from Galoob. For weeks leading up to my birthday, I had been seeing commercials for the animal on TV, and the song was stuck in my head. The animal, the animal, can anything stop? The animal, the animal. So on my fifth birthday, much to my surprise, my parents got me the animal. They didn't only get me the animal, they got me the one I wanted, the red one. I didn't want the black truck, and I didn't want the yellow car, I wanted the red SUV. So I got it and it was awesome. And I played with this thing all the time. I ran it over obstacles in my room, I took it outside, anything to see those claws come out and just make its way over any terrain you put in front of it was so amazing to me. But sometime between 1986 and 1988 when I moved to South Carolina, my animal either got lost, broken, trashed, stolen given away or left behind. I don't know what happened to it. So fast forward to 2013 when I began the journey of recollecting all my NES games and everything else nostalgic, I came across an animal commercial on YouTube and decided that I needed it back in my life. So because I love the animal so much, in 2020 when I realized they were re-releasing the animal. I got this for my son for Christmas. This one's a little more cartoony and growls and shakes and eventually rolls right out of the box after you do the steps that it requires. But it's pretty awesome. 
So as you can see, it is retro inspired. It's red, it's a truck, it has yellow claws that come out the front. The retractable claws work about the same. Once it meets resistance, they come out just like so. Now on the back, there are no longer claws and it actually just has big knobby tires, but it still works about the same. It's pretty awesome. I'll turn it on for you for just a quick second. So as you can see, he's pretty angry. And if you hit this, I think it makes him go. Yep, so there it is. The 2020 version of the animal. So obviously I'm very happy to have my original animal back in my life. And it's pretty cool to have this new version of the animal too for my son to play with. I think this thing is awesome and I'm so happy to have it back in my collection. Thanks D Nerd for the chance to show off this awesome 80s toy, the animal. Tom and Lacey, I can't even tell you how excited I am to actually do this video. A lot of people don't really know that I started collecting toys before I actually started collecting video games. Yeah, it was your first thing you really yeah. started collecting for before anything. You don't even know what I picked out yet. I don't. She was giving me guesses, but she doesn't know. So the first one I thought, because it was high on your list to collect for, yeah. was He-Man and the Battle Cat. I thought it might be that. He said no, no. and I was like, okay, you're not thinking properly. The first thing you really collected was your G1 Optimus Prime. You had to get a G1 Optimus Prime. And I remember that now, and I'm like, that has to be it. That has to be it. Nope. Fudge! What? Fudge. So I had this Voltron when I was younger. This is the Voltron. It was, there were some huge ones. There were some metal oh, ones. Yeah. There were some monstrosities that were just ginormous. But this and is the one you had. We were probably considered a poor family, and this is the one that my mom could afford, and this is the one I had, and I absolutely loved it, because I loved Voltron back mm -hmm. then. Quick story, um, they had a contest for the Voltron show back when it was on. You would uh, draw your favorite Voltron lion and yeah. pilot and mail it into them. And then I think it was weekly or maybe even daily. I'm not 100% sure on that. They would pick a certain amount and then they would give away a Voltron. Yeah. And my cousin won. I think it was Michael John. I don't John. know that I've ever even no. heard this Michael story John before. won and I did not. <laughs> but this is the one that my mom bought me for Christmas. It came with a sword and a shield that I could not get and I still cannot find because the swords that I find are for the bigger yes. Voltron. These yeah. Voltrons are like those little wind, the pullback cars because they got the little rubber tires on them. You'll pull them back, spring load it, and then they'll zip along like those cars. Yeah. Um, I had to collect it in pieces. Yes, I remember on that. On eBay. I do not see these at all around here. Nope. Um, it probably ran me over a hundred bucks just to get this in yes. pieces, separate pieces. If anybody has a sword and shield, I want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank All right, you. guys. Thanks Thank for inviting so us, sir. I, I I really enjoy my '80s toys. They, that was the best generation for toys. It was yeah. absolutely. Back to you guys. What's up everybody, ZombieJLT1, your Supernatural Gamer, Gaming Beautician, and King of the Supernatural Stream, talking to you today about retro toys. This is another passion of mine besides retro game collecting that, just like game collecting, has been with me since as far back as I can remember. Uh, what you're looking at is a variety of different lines that I have managed to save throughout the years. A lot of these are childhood favorites and still remain favorites to this day. But one of the toy lines that I unfortunately lost as a kid was my collection of Computer Warriors. Now, you're probably wondering, what are the Computer Warriors? Computer Warriors was a line that was released by Mattel uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, I want to say. It had a pilot cartoon episode that was supposed to launch with the toys, but sadly, the cartoon did not get picked up. If you are interested in seeing that, I do believe it's still available on YouTube. It's a very cool blend of hand-drawn animation and early CGI uh, computer animation. Highly recommend it. It's your basic good guy versus bad guy story. The good guys, the computer warriors, were led by the hero Rom, and it was their job 
to capture the virus warriors led by their leader Megahertz. Now, these toys were unique in that they actually had a toy feature and an actual use feature to them. For example, uh, in the show, both the heroes and the bad guys take household items and convert them into assault vehicles. And this is the Techno Tank. It's a digital clock that gets converted by one of the good guys. Of course, the bad guys have to have their own version, so they converted a soccer trophy into a tank. The bad guys had a pencil sharpener that turned into a jet fighter. And the good guys actually converted a Pepsi can into a jet fighter. Now aside from the Pepsi can, like I said, uh, a lot of these actually worked. Uh, the pencil sharpener could sharpen pencils. The digital clock actually told time. There was a calculator that was fully functional, turned into a tank. My favorite was a actually working flashlight that turned into uh, a rocket fighter that my favorite character piloted. There was a book that housed a rocket ship as well. And then there was the uh, giant playset, which was a computer that folded out and had various uh, platforms and things for you to use. And then they also had some loose figurines and loose fighter jets. They were called uh, circuit speeders because they had little circuit boards on the bottom. A very unique, very cool line. Sadly, short-lived in both the toy and animated form, but if you like this kind of thing, I highly suggest you look into it. Take a look at the pilot, see what you think, see if that's actually something you would have watched and if these were actually the toys that you might have played with yourself. And let me know what you think. I do want to thank Do You Nerd for inviting me to be a part of this. I can't wait to see what you guys have in store for the rest of us because I love to see what toys just like what games made you happy as a kid and still make you happy as an adult. And if you're looking to find those special pieces, be sure to reach out to us in the retro community who are toy collectors. I'm sure we'd be more than happy to help you reconnect to those good memories and good feelings. So until then, Zombie JLT1, I will see you later. Hey guys, Jason the Corpse Flood Gaming here. And I had a lot of awesome toys when I was a kid. And for the most part, a lot of the important ones made it through intact. But one of my all-time favorite toys, unfortunately, was destroyed. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a gigantic Ghostbusters fan, so that should be no surprise. And one of the most important toys as a Ghostbuster fan when you were a kid is the Ecto-1. And when uh, the nostalgia hit and I started wanting to pick up all my old toys and bring them to my own house from my old room, that was one of the most devastating moments was finding it and then noticing that the whole side was ripped off it. So when my wife and I got married, we went on our first trip out of town together afterwards and the first thing I saw in this nerd store we went in was the Ecto-1 and at that time the nostalgia price wasn't really hitting it yet. So I picked it up for around 40 bucks Canadian, which was awesome. It had the box, which is a little worse for wear, but cool to have either way and the only thing that was different from my Ecto-1 that I had growing up was I actually had the Ecto-1A which is the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters 2 but in the age of the internet I was able to just go on eBay and buy a sticker sheet just when I was about to add the stickers to my Ecto-1 Hasbro in their infinite wisdom decided hey let's re-release re to go with the Kenner Ghostbusters we released last year so naturally, I bought two, and as soon as those arrive, I'm going to add these to it, and then I'll have the exact Ecto-1 I had as a child. And another second chance, speaking of those kind of Ghostbusters, I always wanted the original four Ghostbusters. So naturally, when these were announced, I had to buy two sets. I'm still waiting to open these, because it's going to be painful to open them, but me and the kids got to play with these. All right, I want to thank Tom and Lacey for having me on. Uh, of course, I'll be down for just about any toy-related video you guys want to do in the future. See you guys later. Bye. Okay, those 
are some awesome toys and if there's any of those that aren't already in your collection how many of you are jumping over to ebay after all of this to hunt those down oh oh yeah, yeah, you put that hand down. Didn't, i thought you were talking to me <laughs> all right <laughs> well what about you what is a toy you used to have you got rid of lost whatever but you've gotten it back it's your second chance well mine is a duo and it's not the dynamic duo it's Teddy Rexman and Grubby! I had him as a kid. I loved him to death. I had all of his different clothing. I would change out his clothing depending on what book I was listening to. I absolutely love the fact that you had these books that you could, you know, read along with and he read them to you. And I absolutely love it. Teddy was mine and Grubby was actually my sister's. Okay. But we were five years apart, so we basically, our toys were this, each other's toys. And the cool thing about these guys is Teddy is the one who actually does all the work, but you just have a cable that runs to Grubby, and then when it's Grubby's parts, he would actually talk. Gotcha. So it's always kind of cool. He's animatronic. He's super cool. Now, I didn't ever want to actually hurt him, but I was always fascinated by his mouth and eyes moving. So I would never poke real hard, but I would just feel his eyes blink, because I don't know why it fascinated me. And I think one time I accidentally pushed too hard and poked his eye out. So he only kind of had one eye, and I'm pretty sure that's why I didn't have Teddy anymore. I think it freaked my mom out, and she got rid of Teddy. Yeah, it sounds like that freaked me yeah, out. Yeah, so I definitely will not be doing that to this Teddy. <laughs> Come dream with me tonight. For the most part, I was really good with my toys. I, I really did hang on to a lot you of mean stuff. You mean you didn't poke their eyes out? Uh, no, there <laughs> might have been some firework mishaps with some, but most of all, I kept a lot of my stuff actually. For years and years, I just packed it away and hang on to it. But there was one guy, one golden guy. Okay, seriously, I was not obsessed with the series Captain Power. I, I had the jet and I had this dude right here, which is the titular Captain Power. Captain Shiny Pants. <laughs> he's, he's about the same size as a G.I. Joe figure. He doesn't quite have the articulation. His hands don't hold any of the G.I. Joe weapons or anything, which, you know, kind of sucked back then. But it was always cool because I would integrate him into the Joe's fight with Cobra! <laughs> because, you know, I mean, he, he just looked cool. His helmet, his visor, and he's got that little uh, spot in his chest where if you put a light back there, it glows. So he seemed like this uber futuristic warrior. I have no idea what happened to my Captain Power figure. It got lost somewhere along the way. And Probably I found- him to a rocket. No, no. <laughs> Sending him back to Buck Rogers. I found this guy for 50 cents at a flea market. I was like, you know what? Yeah, it's time to add you back to the collection. So. Are you sure the Joes would have actually let him play a log? I mean, he looks like a rich man trying to play army with his gold armor there. <laughs> What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. That's that's where the Joes got their funding. <laughs> listen, listen, Duke, you just gotta let him let him pretend, all right? He's uh, funding the general and the USS <laughs> flag over there. <laughs> yeah, peace. I love peace. I'd be out of a job with peace. All right, well there you guys have it. I would like to offer a huge thank you to everybody who joined us for this collaboration. Naturally, there will be links to all of their channels in the description below. Please go check them all out. Give them likes, give them subs. Let them know that you saw them talking about toys over on Do You Nerds channel. And as for you guys, nerdlings, drop some comments down below. Tell us about your toys. What did you have? You got rid of, lost, whatever, but you got it back. It's your second chance toy. Give the video a like, notification bell, all that jazz, you know how it works. I, I don't even need uh, Teddy and Grubby to tell you how it works. Hi there, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. How are you today? Fine. Well then. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, because you definitely want to know when the next video is coming out, because Jen and us, we got lots of ideas between us. So there's going to be a lot more 80s goodness coming your way. And hit us up on the Retro Refresh, Go to T Public because we got merchandise over there. And remember, nerdlings, if we like it, we go for the gold and nerd it. Ah! 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 Ah!
nom 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 nom. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. <laughs> Now I want to play with these toys.